Hi, welcome back to our honors geometry videos. This video is on 10.7. I do want to review a little bit of 10.6 before we start. So on 10.6, we talked about if two secants intersect inside the circle, then let's say this is 35 degrees and 85 degrees. I would add those two up to get 120 and divide by two to find out that that is 60 degrees. So that's if it's intersecting inside the circle, I would add them up and divide by two. If they intersect outside a circle, so let's say this is 100 degrees and 40 degrees, what I would do then is I would subtract. So if they intersect inside, you add. If they intersect outside, you would subtract and then divide by two to find out what that angle measure is. That also works for problems like these, where let's say this is 130 degrees. What a lot of students will struggle with is they'll see that's 130, but they won't know how to find the rest of this circle. Well, this is just the rest of the 360 degrees, which means that that must be 230 degrees. In total, they add up to 360. So then I can subtract to get 100 and divide by 2 to get 50. And again, if they are intersecting inside the circle, you would add and divide by 2. If the intersection is outside the circle, you would subtract and divide by 2. So let's try these three problems. I would try these three on your own. Pause the video and then unpause to check your work. All right, so here we should have 143 divided by 2 is 71 and a half. Here, that's 106, which means this is 254. So 254 minus 106 is 148, which means that's 74. And then here, my two arcs, JM and 111 should subtract to 94 degrees. So I'll add up 111 plus 94 to get 205. And I can always check my work. 205 minus 111 is 94. Divided by 2 is 47 degrees. So that all works out. My answer here, that would be 205 degrees. Now the new material is our special segments in a circle. If two chords intersect in a circle, then the products of the lengths of that chord, of one chord, would be equal to the products of the length of another chord. Well, what does that mean? That means that A times B would be equal to C times D. Notice that C and D are on the same chord. A and B are on the same chord. This also works similarly if they intersect outside the circle. But if it's outside, I would take part times the whole. So maybe I would do, let's write part times the whole equals part times the whole, which in this case would be AB times AC, equals AD times AE. So AB times AC equals AD times AE. And of course, since that is commutative, the order really doesn't matter. Let's try a couple practice problems. If it's inside the circle, it's part times part equals part times part. So this would be 2 times x equals 3 times 6. Or 2x equals 18 or x equals 9. 
On B, it gets a little bit tougher. Why don't you take a second, pause the video, and write out your equation on your own? So this would be 3 times 6 equals x times the quantity of x plus 7. And then I can solve this 18 equals x squared plus 7x. And what do I do now? Well, now I have to get x squared plus plus 7x minus 18 equals 0. And I'm going to factor this. So I would get factors of 18 are 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. And I could factor this to make x plus 9 and x minus 2. So my final answers, my two options would be x equals negative 9 or x equals positive 2. But I know that I cannot have a negative 9 because if I look at this, this segment cannot be negative 9 units long. That doesn't make sense. So my only answer could possibly be x equals 2. So you're going to have an extraneous solution. You've got to look out for that. Why don't you pause the video again, try 1A and 1B, and then unpause to check your work. All right, so this would be 6 times x equals 60, or x is 10. And this one's a little bit harder. So let's see, this would be 